flat land like a man on the run, riding down Highway 61. Sides of the roads all lined with fields, nothing but sunset in the windshield. As I ride into town, this is where I go to slow down. Miles and miles of soybeans and corn, I'm in the place where the blues was born. What's up guys, Crappie Connection, another year has passed, we're back here at Grizzly Jig Event, ain't that right Brad? Man, it's awesome. Yeah, awesome, awesome, awesome. We got uh, two awesome fellas here, we got Jason McDuffie and Joe Harris with being in pose. Guys, welcome man. Thank Glad you. Glad to be Glad here. Glad to be here. Shoot, yeah, so what did you already discuss when y'all brought him over, we was going to talk about? Well, kind of Joel here, he's going to discuss spring fishing, side pulling, we're going to kind of dig into that technique, how do you get out there and do it in the springtime? Uh, this is when we're going to be uh, watching this episode right now. It's going to be hard of the spring. So, Joel, kind of dig in. Why do you use this technique? How do people get out there and do it? And what equipment they need to actually get out there and do this technique with? Well, first, first off, it's a lot easier to make a side pull than it is to long line. Uh, I can control the depth of my lures by counting the line off on the, the different rod made by B&M. Uh, I can pick up and turn quicker if I need to. And actually I can turn sometimes without reeling them in. Yeah. You know what oh, I'm yeah. saying? Absolutely. And that you can't hardly do long line unless you've got a really large area. If you're in a small hollow, I can do a U-turn and not ever pick them up. Right. You can't do that long line. Right. You know, another thing is with me guiding, I have a customer on this side of me and another customer sitting like here. We've all got the same chance to fish, and I control the boat from where I'm sitting in the back seat. Never have to get up, move to the front deck, mm -hmm. anything. We run a trolling motor on the side of the boat, and I can stand up and dip any of their fish or my fish from where I'm sitting. They never have to get up. It's just comfort creature, creature comforts. You know? Yeah, yeah. So, and it works really well for me. You can well, like you're on your poles, I know you said that the difference, and I used that pole years ago, you know, even long line, and I know it's got a real good backbone, soft tip. Very soft tip. Um, what size lengths of poles are you using? I'm personally using all 10 footers. I used to run uh, nines myself and then drop down to eight, and then my customer's eight, but I found out I like them all with the same length. That's personal preference of whoever's in the boat, but we run all 10s now. Okay. What about, um, and I know, Somebody's never heard this technique technique before. You hear side pulling and explain that actually. You said the well, trolling motor on the side, but that boat's actually moving sideways. The boat's actually coming through the water sideways. You have to turn the motor one way and lock it. That way you can control. I can control it here with the trolling motor. If you don't turn that motor and lock it, the mm -hmm. boat you can't control the boat. So uh, the Yamaha makes a lock where when you pull my tiller handle motor over, I can reach down and lock it, and then I can tr control that boat which way it goes with my hand control trolling motor. Mm -hmm. and, and the boat is actually going through the water sideways. All three of us are sitting down in the boat, just like we're sitting here side by side right now, and we're a little further apart fishing, and it's just easy, creature comforts. So say fishing 20 foot deep, are you? that's the depth those fish are holding at. Right. How, do, how much line are you letting out? Well, that comes from a lot of years of experience, but about 40 foot of line. Really? Real close. Uh, so no line counter? You use a line counter reel for that? I do not. I count them off, and the rod has arrows on it that's designed for that. Uh, I don't know it. if I can get it up here where you can see it. Yep. Throw it up right in front of that GoPro over there in front but of Brad. It's actually got arrows here on the rod for the pulls. Mm -hmm. Really? Roger Gant. The man that pioneered side pulling, he will work with B&M to design this rod. 
you know, he was inducted into the National Hall of Fame, Fishing Hall of Fame this That's year. That's awesome. I mean, he is. That is awesome. I, I consider myself a very good side puller. Roger's great. I mean, he really is. Let me see that, Rod. I want to see the arrows on it, how that works. Oh, that's neat right there. Yeah, isn't that about a foot every pull, isn't it? Or a little uh, and that's actually a little over. Tangled uh, up in a microphone uh, cord. And I, while we've got the rod up oh, here. I'm going to break and have to buy it, Jason. I'll, I'll show you something that I've learned <laughs> it's easier to do for my customers. <laughs> and it sort of takes away the, the arrows. But with customers that's never fished, they get in the boat, and I'll tell them to pull to the air or pull it off quick. Yeah. I see them stopping here, here. So what I've started doing the past couple, three years is I just have them to pull from the reel to the first eye. Mm -hmm. They get it the same that way. Mm -hmm. You understand? Yeah. So my technique's a little different than maybe, uh, say, Rogers, because if you watch him, he'll, he's just he's done it so many years. He's just, right. you know, I have my customers go all the way to the eye and... I found out I have a lot less jig head loss that way because they get it to the right depth and they catch more fish. I see you got two jigs tied on there. I can see a loop knot. Yes. And they're how far apart? Is that 12, About 18 inches? 18 or? inches mostly, roughly. I just get, I don't really, I just do it. I've done it so much. I just reach up in time. Uh, I use a loop knot. I also use the IO jigs by Blake Phillips. Mm -hmm. uh, I found a lot of lakes that I fish that the slab bites work great and the eye hole jig, and it gives it some scent. Now we, you use the same size, right, side pulling? I use two quarter ounce nearly all year long. Occasionally, we fish some lakes over in Alabama that we have a lot of shallower water and we want to run them shallower, so I'll run two eighths. Mm -hmm. And I don't put out near as much line. And the reason for doing that, I want to get the lures further away from the boat. If I was running quarters, they'd be really close right. to the boat shallow. Right. Well, if I back up to one eighths, I can get them further from the boat and still run them shallow. Like so, clear water. So pretty much two sizes is what you keep in the boat? That's what I keep in the boat. It is. Okay. What about scent? I know we talked about the eye hole jig and it was designed for scent. It's designed for scent. And that's why that I use them. Mm -hmm. and, and believe me, um, there's a couple of lakes that we fish. We run tests, go down there and pre-fish and just, just got customers coming in. Right. And we run them without the slab bites. They don't pay enough attention. Don't, they don't. You'll catch four fish to one using the slab bites versus not using them. I know a big thing that's come up this past year is color. Now, you know, I'm a long liner and, and I believe in color. I hear a lot of guys saying they don't believe in color. What's your take on uh, color jigs? I always use color. I always have. You can pick up a color pattern. At least I, I I'm, feel I'm like on, I can. I'm going to tell a story. I, I, I feel like I can. I'm going to tell a story about an older okay. gentleman that ties her jigs at Fish's Pickwick. You got the mic, man. Hit it. And uh, <laughs> one day he he uh, he called and he said, you catching any fish? I said, they're slow. He said, you got some redhead with lime hair with black thread? And I said, yeah, but I got on redhead with lime hair. He said, put some on with black thread. Really? Started hammering them. I'm like, just that little bit of black. Isn't that crazy? And, and he, I, I used to go to the lake and I've got something tied on everything. I know what I want to fish with, what I'm going to go because I've been catching him and this and that. But when you go fishing with him and you get in his, and he's a side puller, uh -huh. you get in his boat, he is constantly changing jigs till he gets, he'll have a pile at the end of the day, piled up boat. on his, in front of his Sounds seat. Like Brad's boat. Yep. Nope. It looks like a, bag of skittles you know, in back of my boat because i will change colors in a heartbeat yeah and, and i'm over right behind them putting them in my pocket <laughs> yeah well i mean I, I change colors but i've never been is i mean he will sit there his brother will be running the trolling motor and fishing and he's steadily changing jigs he'll put it in the water and give it maybe 10 15 minutes and he hasn't caught a fish on he's tied on but he has where i'm gonna say i have 40 different colors mm -hmm. of jig heads with hair tied on. He may have 10 same color head, same color hair, and every one of them have a different thread. Wow. I mean, that's how he, much he believes in the difference. Mm -hmm. But it made a difference that day. That black thread made a difference. You know. <laughs> you ever use, uh, tip them with minnows or? I never buy minnows. I'm sorry. I, the yeah. min minnow farmers uh, would, uh, probably wouldn't like me because I just don't. Uh -huh. I, I'm, I firmly believe in hair and plastics. 
And my Mental favorite, lives matter. Mental lives matter. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> I mean, I'm a firm believer in the slab curlies and uh, mm -hmm. made by crappie magnet and uh, slider two and eight inch men is made by Charlie Brewer slider. Right here, I see you got a couple of packages. I, I, did. I, I see you're uh, definitely heavy on orange. Uh, tell, well, me, tell me your five favorite colors in plastics. Number one is black and chartreuse. Number two is white and chartreuse. Then I love this new color sliders got out. Hold up to that GoPro real good. I'm going to turn it around back where you can see the color of it. Uh, I've got a new Mardi Gras color that we helped them with. It's probably number four. And then if I'm fishing like Grenada, Sardis, the water's muddy, always orange and chartreuse. Mm -hmm. Orange mm -hmm. and chartreuse, you know. But my number four colors are what I just said. Black and chartreuse, white and chartreuse, the new Mardi Gras and chartreuse, and this color right here. I mean, it, that's just me. Chartreuse. <laughs> this is actually called Stardust. Stardust. Mm -hmm. What about jig heads? Is you, you determine even like uh, color heads different? And I do. Do you uh, try to, I know like me, and I, it may be just a personal deal, but I like something, a different color head compared to the body. I do that. And, you know, uh, uh, one of my favorite colors on Pickwick is a dark red head. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it, you know, I'm put a black body on it, dark red head. I'm not big on orange on Pickwick. Seems like when I put on orange, I have a tendency to catch catfish. You know, Barnett, I guarantee you the best color to catch catfish is going to be pink. Well, <laughs> there you go. You know, everybody yeah. has a preference. And then my other jig heads I use, I use the fin spans made by Crappie Magnet. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a picture of those. And Jeff makes these in three or four sizes. I use a quarter ounce. Just good, dude. I like Jeff. Yeah, you can't beat Jeff. Are they coming out with different color of blades? I think it's been discussed, but I can't answer that truthfully. You know, I'm a I'm a I'm a bronze color blade kind of guy, I guess. Right. But you know, I think it's a, a lot of personal preference when it comes to some of this, but and confidence. Confidence. I think anything any of us fish with, I've got a friend that you get in his boat, and it's amazing. You can say, well, I've given him different things to try, and he said that's the wrong color. Mm -hmm. But you get in his boat, he has t three mason jars. He doesn't carry a tackle box. Three mason jars. Mason jars. One of them's got eight ounce jig heads, the other one's got 16th, and the other one has got red and white tubes. He uses it 12 months out of a year. He's a single pole fisherman. And he, I give him a pack of red and white tubes the other day from Slider, and they had glitter in the tail. I hand them to him, I said, try these. He said, shook his head, and he said, wrong color. But I will try them for, since you give them to me. <laughs> wrong color. Wrong color. With the glitter in <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, because that glitter. <laughs> you know, so what I'm saying, self-confidence. Oh, yeah. If you believe, if you, he believes in them, he catches fish on it 12 months out of a year, mm -hmm. he believes in it. Mm -hmm. And that's just like me. My favorite probably color is black and chartreuse with a red head. I'm, I'm not talking about a bright red. I'm talking about a darkish red. Yeah. Um, Mississippi, well, Mississippi State red, brother. What uh, what, <laughs> what what lakes do you fish mostly? Let everybody know. Uh, I and fish, guide on. I guide on Pickwick Lake and Bay Springs Lake mostly. I do so, do some of the BCDA lakes in North uh, West Alabama, and uh, early in the spring, when it's not as well good on Pickwick, I do fish the Coosa River. So, okay, well, I've got some along that lines. Somebody's getting ready to go. Let's say March 28th down to Pickwick. Mm -hmm. Give them a, uh, a full disclosure in your mind what they need to be looking for to fish at that time frame in the March. If, if they're going on their on their own, I, I, and honestly, most people are not set up to side pull, okay? Right. Yeah. So I'm, I'm going to tell them they need a long line. Mm -hmm. That's my thoughts. They need a long line. And if they're long line, a lot of people come down there and they long line, and they're long line with them 116th or 132nd. Mm. Well, there's a couple, three weeks that they can hammer them. Mm -hmm. Do really well. But the rest of the time, they need on two quarter ounce, and they need to put them right down to the bottom. And if they don't know, you know, I've got some guys that's asked me, and I tell them, I'll say, let the line out till your rod tip starts right. bumping. You know it's on the bottom. Reel it up a couple of rounds, and you'll catch fish. Hmm. What, you know, the, the, what depths of water should they be looking for in a marsh there? I fish there? mostly 20 foot, you know, 15 to 25 foot of water. I really like, we've got some 20 foot flats that I really love to pull. There's stump beds in them. 
uh, catch a lot of fish in 20 foot of water, mm -hmm. a lot of fish. And, and pe that amazes people. I mean, they actually, the fish will actually spawn in 20 foot of water on pickles. Well, that's what my next question was that, would that be really considered pre-spawn crappie at that point at well, Pickwick some, in a March? Somewhat, but there's also a lot of fish that spawn that deep. Yeah, I know it's all about temperature. Yes, absolutely. And what kind of spring we're gonna have. Exactly. And, uh, it's gonna be a flood of winter again, I bet. I don't say that. You know, I'm, I'm, I started fishing Pickwick. My first trip was with my grandfather. He's the one that taught me to love a crappie fishing. I was four years old, and I fished Pickwick all my life. And Bear Creek, that, that was one of the things that I could do. I could walk to Bear Creek, which is actually the creek that runs in mm -hmm. to Pickwick, and there, uh, I, there's no telling how many crappie I've caught my life off of Bear Creek. Question for you, what river did you say you fished? I fished Tennessee River, Tennessee? Pickwick Lake. Okay. Acusa. 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 How much That's current? over in Alabama. How much uh, current do you f crappie fish in that river? On the Coosa, you don't have much current. You don't? But on Tennessee, you have quite a bit of current at times. But before we fish, it doesn't really affect it. It don't so really much. affect it? Uh-uh. Uh, if we get out on the river, most of the time it's on in the summer or early fall, and we'll be single poling, not side poling. You, on the river, do you mostly like to fish the cuts, the breaks? Uh, ledges and brush. Ledges and brush. Yes. Is it a lot of black crappie or white crappie there? Well, on Bay Springs, we catch a lot of blacks. We're starting to catch a lot of blacks on Pickwick, uh -huh. off the brush and off the ledges. Yeah. But uh, predominantly at Pickwick, you're going to catch white crappie. Mm-hmm. That's I never awful. fish there. I I, fish I've always wanted to go to Pickwick. Jason, you're so quiet over here, well, man. Well, Jason's well, hey, experienced just, the side pulling. I mean, I hey. Are you side uh, puller? Well, I'm not, but I've gone with him several times. And uh, it was definitely the first time I got in a boat and we started moving sideways. That didn't feel right. <laughs> uh, but you can't argue with the numbers of crappie you put in a boat. I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's a really unique technique. And I know when Roger was the first doing it, some of the stories he, he has told us is that you know, these guys would come down and see this guy pulling a boat sideways mm -hmm. down the lake and think, man, y'all Southern boys, y'all don't know the trolling motor goes on the front of the boat. <laughs> and yeah. uh, All right. and uh, then Roger would whoop them in a tournament and they'd understand why. And, uh, but, you know, um, it, I've had a blast fishing with him, side pulling. Um, I think last time we went to Pigwick, we, we yeah. limited out real fast. Yeah, we went to Mills Creek, which is Bear Creek comes in, you know, and uh, I was going to film Jason and everybody after I actually did it, I filmed him. He, when I got the camera on, he actually hung a fish just as I got it on. Reeled it in, I got it all on film and I had several phone calls was like, what'd you do, catch him one and let it out? And, uh -huh. made like, and I said, no, literally that really happened. I mean, you know, he caught a lot of fish, but I, I had actually just got my camera on and he set the hook on one. So I got every bit of it on film. It was perfect. It was great. We love those know. magic days. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it was just good. Yeah, we didn't but have to fake it like Russ Bailey. No, <laughs> we didn't fake it, you know. We, didn't, we, <laughs> we did not, that wasn't any fake to it, but I posted that on Facebook. That's been a while back, but well, it's a very, very productive way of catching fish. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I've done it on Sardis in the middle of the summer and just absolutely where I'm at when the thermal climbs up and they're up in it, up above it, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, I've never done it very much on Grenada. Uh, I did a couple times, but it wasn't, it wasn't as productive. It's nothing like at home on Pickwick. Mm -hmm. I remember Roger again, he won uh, Crappie Masters down on Ross Barnett. And I fished that tournament, and let me tell you, it was rough. Mm -hmm. And I remember seeing his boat coming across there. I was like, it ain't no way in the world he's catching crappie out there on that river channel and four and a half, five foot swells, and he's just doing like a little bobber going down Side through pool. there, you know? But he come back and won it. Yeah, I, I was like, man, he knows what he's doing. I better watch out for that there, guy. There's a lot of people that call me. We, I mean, I've got different friends that call and see what the fish are doing at home, mm -hmm. and, and we talk. And and there's a lot of them. And I said, man, I wanted to fish tomorrow. We got a 15 mile an hour wind. I said, man, I love a 15 mile an mm hour -hmm. wind. If it's the right thing, I don't even use my trolling motor. All right. You know, I'm mm -hmm. turning that boat sideways. He's directing it. Yeah. Uh, What's your speed range? I know we, we're getting into well, there right there on that. Is speed. Uh, if you ask Roger that, he'll tell you. I pull as fast as they'll bite it. Well, I like that. I've learned that, okay? I agree. Over time. But when I first started out, I was always running around 0 .7, 0 .8. Mm -hmm. But the past few years, one, I, and I know because I look down at my depth finder, mm -hmm. one, 1.2 is about generally where I pull. 
See, I'm the guy when I pull long line and I had a guy stop me while I go at Grizzly and say, you know, I started speeding up since your seminar last year and I really like going fast, but I always start fast and work myself down. Right. And you'll hear the opposite. A lot of other guys, which that works for them, that's great. But whenever I, I, I long line, I start fast as I can I start and work fast. my way down. I totally agree with that. I start fast and if I have to, I will slow it down. Mm -hmm. But it, it, like we were talking about the wind, well, God didn't finish that. I had a customer come from Tupelo. He's by himself, just him and I. And we put in at Eastport for some reason. He had a cabin up there, I believe, and he wanted to put in at Eastport. So we did, and we run up the lake, and I made a pull and put like six fish in a boat. Go back up the lake and start pulling my trolling motor quit. Mm. I'm like, look, I can take out. At that point, I didn't realize I need to keep one in the boat. Mm -hmm. I mean, that truck extra, but now I keep an extra trolling motor, whatever, parts. But I, I said, he said, I want to keep fishing. I said, well, maybe there's enough wind we can do this. <laughs> and it was. It's about a 15 mile an hour wind. So I would run up Bear Creek there, or Mills Creek. I'd turn the boat sideways in the wind. I'd turn my motor over here and lock it like I was supposed to. Didn't even put the trolling motor down because it quit. It would yeah. burn it up. And somewhere around 2 o'clock, we had 47 fish without a trolling motor. Hmm, but if the awesome. wind hadn't been blowing, we'd have been going home is what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. if, so if the boat moving... It works. Well, that, that's a big factor in the spring because we're going to have wind. Yeah. You can bet on that. Yeah. I want to also, we got Jason on here, kind of come back and uh, really tell us about B&M and the history of B&M. Uh, you know, B&M, we're proud to say that we're sponsored by B&M, and thank you guys. Yeah, absolutely. greatly appreciated. Very honored. Well, I mean, personally, I'm on the road a lot for B&M, and I listen to a lot of podcasts. So... As soon as I saw y'all were doing one and doing one well, that's why I went to Jack. I was like, maybe we need to consider mm -hmm. this. And uh, so. Well, thank y'all. Yeah. yeah. Hey, we're glad to sure. be a part of it because, man, podcasts are going to be the future of most. I mean, right. most people our age and younger, we don't listen to the radio that no. much anymore. No. no. Uh -uh. You know, it, it, it's like Netflix. I can just pick what I want to watch. Or right. now I can just pick what I want to listen to. Yeah. Exactly. exactly. And I think it's great that, that we've got a crappie one because. You know, crappie has become mainstream in the last 10, 15 years from, uh, you know. It's definitely not what it used to be. No, no, no. It's no. growing in leaps and bounds. Yeah. And, you know, just to give you a little bit of history of uh, B&M, we're obviously a Mississippi-based uh, company. And we've been in West Point, Mississippi since 1947. Hmm. Yes, 1947. A few days. Yeah. So, uh, so we're in our 73rd year Man, of business. And How is that? Probably not. Is that yours? Oh, you get, that's one strike, Brad. Uh, it happens. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get up and get it real quick. No, just leave it. All right. Go you ahead. Mean, you mean to wait? No, no, go ahead and let her bump. Um, well, you know, we've been doing this for 73 years. Well, the way B&M started, and I know a lot of y'all's listeners probably know this, but B&M actually stands for brooms and mops. Mm -hmm. See, and, I didn't know that. Mm. Yeah. Really? I didn't know that. Brooms yeah. and mops. Yeah. Yeah. Mr. Will, who's the founder of B&M, who is Jack's wife's grandfather. So Jack's third generation family owned of the same company. Oh, okay. And uh, uh, Jack's wife's grandfather, Mr. Will, got back from World War II and started a broom and mop company. Well, during that time, he also um, was selling. It's very interesting, I got that here. Yeah. Go you hadn't seen one of the new hats? Huh? You hadn't seen one of the I new hats? I ain't seen the one of the new hats. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it says brooms and mops okay. right on it. Um, <laughs> but the, uh, so he started a broom and mop company, but then he also started selling cane poles and just bamboo cane poles. And then uh, the pole business became bigger than the broom and mop business, huh. and we became a fishing pole company, and the brooms and mops went away. But, you know, when you're already incorporated with B&M, yeah. you just stick with it. And so, you know, since the 1940s, you know, the evolution of rods have gone from oh, yeah. just bamboo cane poles to the first uh, telescopic pole we ever made was Little Jewel. Mm -hmm. And Little Jewel, we still sell a ton of them for brim fishing primarily. Um, then you had your Black Widows. You got, we got into fiberglass in the 60s and 70s, the West Point crappie rod. Mm -hmm. um, and then the early 80s, around 1980 or 81, 
we introduced the very first graphite jig pole in the United States, the BGJP, mm -hmm. Bucks Graphite Jig very Pole. Very first one in the United States, yep. first graphite pole. And um, we, have a, we have a sales rep agency based out of Birmingham, and they told Buck Simmons uh, that nobody's going to pay $30 for a copyright. Now you think they're dollars for copyright. Oh yeah. I mean, it, you know, that's nothing. Uh, and it became, you know, it, it's our best seller. And you know, to this day, it, nationally, it's still the best selling jig pole in the United uh -huh. States. And uh, um, you know, obviously, as techniques changed, you know, we, we went from just having when crappie fishermen just went from you know single pole jigging to trolling spider rigging and you know now long line and pulling crankbaits mm -hmm. and of course live scope has changed everything in the last 16 months 18 months mm -hmm. um you know we had to start making different rods for different techniques right and uh you know just to watch the evolution of people going from us primarily selling you know 10 11 and 12 foot jig poles to now we probably sell just as many 14 and 16 foot and in the last two years 18 and 20 foot Mm -hmm. uh, uh, PSTs, pro staff trolling rods, have picked up in large part because of people pulling crankbaits. Right. And wanting that wider, you know, that bigger span Bang. to cover with all those crankbaits. And, uh, I mean, heck, right now we're currently out of 18 footers because of it. So it's, uh, you know, the, and as B&M, as, you know, we've, 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 uh, we use our pro staff to develop our rods because, right. you know, I Jack. Y'all do that very well. <laughs> thank you. Jack and I are businessmen. We know how to sell poles. We like to fish. We're nowhere near as good as our pro staff at all. And so we rely on them 100% to develop our rods. Um, you know, Jack and I, we may come up with some color schemes or things that might sell. And, um, you know, and we'll, we'll spend two years working with a pro staff to develop a rod before we ever come out with it. And, you know, cause if you come out with something and it, it's not what people want or you put out a bunch of them and they start breaking, you know, that, that, that doesn't do you any good at all. So, right. um, you know, in, in the last five years, you know, we've gone from being just a crappie and brim company to catfish. Mm -hmm. Um, and even starting this year with, Sam Heaton guiding, uh, doing a lot of inshore guiding. We're actually making a saltwater rod. Hmm. Uh, so for inshore or offshore? Inshore. Inshore. Yep. Mostly speckled trout and redfish yeah. and that type of thing. And uh, it's going to be Sam Heaton's signature rod. But uh, it's, you know, crappie fishing is the second largest freshwater uh, species that people go after. Bass is mm -hmm. obviously number one. Um, and every, right now. Uh, Right now. Yeah. Right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. A big, it's growing. It's, a, it's changing. It is changing big time. And, you know, every bass fisherman needs to, at night, before when they're saying their prayers, also think Ray Scott of BASS. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. he made a fish that... Um, we call them I mean, ditch pickles. Yeah. I mean, you know, <laughs> nobody goes out and thinks, man, I want to catch a mess of bass to eat. You know? Right. Yeah. But, man, uh, you know, they're, they're, st they're, they're still the the dominant species in fresh water because of the money involved in tournaments and that type of thing. And we're starting to see that change in crappie fishing, obviously. You know, the tournaments are getting bigger, they're getting better, the payouts are getting better. And I think just as, as, as that grows, I mean, you look at, if you go to Grenada or Sardis or anywhere here in about eight weeks, oh, you're yeah. gonna see a ton of dudes spider rigging. Yep. And, yes. you know, you think about uh, what made that popular, What's the tournament guys? Right. The tournament guys, you know, because it works. Yeah. Right. You know, uh, you know, B and M. We have uh, Ronnie Caps and Steve Coleman to thank for, mm -hmm. um, you know, the for the popularity of our trolling rides. Because, I mean, you know, they've won so much with them that that, that just is, they sell themselves at this point. Um, you know, the uh, <coughs> and you, you know the catfishing side is getting it's getting it's, it's getting growing, growing real well yeah, yeah you know we uh, we're sponsoring a tournament right now that's going on today and tomorrow at lake texoma we're called the cat masters They're, those guys are out of dallas 221 boats good lord that's some big money how much was 30 30 000 yeah cash first place 
What about uh, 2020? What is uh, B&M coming up with? I, I think I sent a little spoiler as my way yeah, coming well, up to Grizzly. Well, that's, that's what, you know, the, the evolution of the rides, uh, obviously, Garmin has changed the game. Yep. Uh, yep. You know, I'm, I'm partial to, to Hummingbird myself, but there's no denying the technology that, that uh, Garmin has come out with has... Game changer. Game changer. You know, we talk about all the evolutions from cane poles mm -hmm. to graphite, mm -hmm. from single poling to spider rigging to long lining. Now it's live scope. Yep. You know, this, we're, we're in the middle of a transition period yep. in crappie fishing. And... I think it's going to help the sport. Oh, yeah. I mean... It, Almost you know, definitely. Anything that gets... More people. More people involved, and you got to get younger people involved. Yep. Period. And, you know, what do younger people like? Yep. Video games. Video games. That's exactly Computers. what I tell my kids. <laughs> yeah. Because, you, know, it, <laughs> you know, it's one thing You know, it's one thing to grow a sport with a ton of baby boomers. Yeah. you got to get these Gen X and Millennials and now Gen Z or whatever they're calling it. you, you got to get them interested in it. Mm -hmm. And one of the ways to do that is oh, video gaming. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, um, you know, I, I, of course, because of that, we've come out with a rod that we actually used to make called the stick. And it, it was a telescopic pole. Long it's time a ago. stick or the stick? It's, it's, well, in Mississippi, it's the stick. Uh, <laughs> right. <laughs> and, uh, but we used to have this telescopic pole that was super stiff and super heavy and, uh, or heavy action rather, not necessarily the weight, but it got to the point where everybody, and y'all guys know this, it was all about getting lighter, more sensitive. Right. And for so long for, for jigging. And, uh, you know, to the point where, you know, our ultra light weighs three ounces. I mean, that, you know, that, that's how light and how sensitive people wanted to get to now we're going back to what the stick was, which is a heavier action, stiffer rod that's you know our ours you know 13 foot seems to be that sweet spot that people are looking for and you know this one you know we did uh, charlie bunning demonstrated it yesterday he picked up a three pound bag of uh duck decoy anchors and just slung it around just you know and, and that's static weight that's not mm -hmm. you know in the water weight because uh, a fish is a little lighter in the water than it is obviously outside the water but um you know it, it's it's the, the, now, the, I will tell you this from a business perspective. The one thing we look at is um, if a guy comes in and he wants to buy trolling rides, well, he's going to buy between 6 and 12. Right. You only need one live scoping ride. Right. Um, now, I will say this. When you've got to build a rod that's that long and can handle boat flipping a crappie, because that's what a lot of people you know, oh, yeah. like to do. They want to air mail it. Um, <laughs> it's kind of the bassification of our sport, mm -hmm. to be honest. It, um, you know... You got to have something that's got that's beefy enough to handle that. So it's going right. to be a little heavier, you know, because it takes a lot of graphite to make one that strong. How many ounces is it? It weighs nine ounces. Now we, Jack's brother is an engineer, and uh, he actually did the all the formula for us. When you put a reel on it, and and because of where the balance point is, and when you're holding it, the pivot the, point. Yeah, I guess you the, could call it. Yeah, the reel fill on it is about 3.6 ounces. Mm -hmm. So. You know that, that that's not really all that bad when you think about it because when you're holding it in the store there's no reel on it when you put that reel on it it actually moves that balance point closer to your hand right so um you know that's what we've, that's one of the things we got for 2020 uh, we got them here at the grizzly jig show are they for sale right now they're for sale oh, right so, now okay grizzly's got them for 99.99 99.99 yep and those stick. those stick and uh yeah i tried to convince jack that we need to make a video with 50 cents magic stick uh, right. you know, for, 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 for the ride but i don't think that'll fly um that's, that's more for the younger generation but uh or at least for my generation that grew up with 50 cents but the um uh outside of that we also partnered with jeff smith at leland lures and crappie magnet and we built what we originally were going to do was just build a trout rod and and try to see if we can couldn't penetrate the trout market some especially using uh, Trout Magnet's name. But we... Uh, Some fly fishing, huh? Yeah, you would think. It, but this is a six and a half foot spinning rod that is ultra, ultra light. And it can cast as little as a 1 64th ounce jig with two pound test line. And it is, a, it, it'll be a brim monster. I mean, this thing is It's amazing. Yeah, and uh, you know, but we, we wanted to market it uh, because of some of the feedback we got from uh, our customers, they wanted it to be multi-species. Mm -hmm. So trout, crappie, uh, and bluegill. 
and we had to put bluegill on it because not everybody's from Mississippi. And uh, <laughs> right. yeah, and and you know, so it's called the Leland's TCB ride, and um, it, it's made for trout and crappie and, and brim. And then we also we've had the brush cutter forever. It's, uh, it's, I, I fished with that years ago. The camouflage one, right? Yep, mm -hmm. it was camo. It's a good wade fishing rod. Very good wade fishing rod, and it is. Uh, it, it up until this year, it it was our stiffest action most backbone uh, jig pole that we had but there's another company in West Point Mississippi called Masio mm -hmm. and Masio when they came out with their water patterns you know we got they, they came to us and said hey what do you think about making a rod so our thought was you know well, which rod do we put it on at first we thought about making a run with the PSTs uh, the uh, pro staff trolling rods with Masio on it then we uh, decided to go with the um, mm -hmm. the brush cutter because it already had camo on it. And um, so what we did, though, because we wanted to uh, market the uh, the Masio brush cutter also for live scopers, because the reality is you can boat flip a crappie with a, with yeah. a brush cutter. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, and it, it's lighter weight than a lot of the live scoping rods. And so we, we actually made that brush cutter 20% stiffer than what it had. Than what been. it was before? Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. man. Yeah. You, you can you can, you can can hoss a crappie into your boat with that thing. I can only imagine. When I was sitting there waiting in Grenada when you were catching two, two and a half pounders, and it was uh, it was amazing right when I was fishing yeah. with it then. Yep. And, you know, uh, you know, the reality is if you want something lighter that costs mm -hmm. about half the price to go live scoping with, that's you can do it with that rod. It's got the backbone to do it, mm -hmm. and uh, you know we put that we went from the generic camo pattern to the mossy oak pattern, um, and that partnership with mossy oak's been good. I mean, you know, they, I mean they they are the now, uh, I believe they're the largest camo company in the United States. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, that obviously them and Realtree go back and forth, but mossy oak I think is is the biggest now. So, well, is there anything else before we before we cut loose here? Is there anything else? Um, you like to add that B&M's got underneath their sleeve that you might want to throw out there, a little teaser for everybody? Ooh. You got to give some juicy stuff. That's, that's Come on, man. <laughs> um, you know, trying to think. We're, we're trying to you – know, the biggest thing is, is that saltwater rod that we're working on. Uh, you, you know, we're already looking at things for next year. What we're trying to do is figure out how to make – and this, this is really, – it's really hard to make a rod that's lightweight – and has a backbone. Yep. Does this very difficult thing to do. But we're trying to figure out how to make a live scoping rod that isn't as heavy and still has the backbone. You know, the mos the brush cutters are pretty good uh, start, but I think going forward, you know, it's going to be figuring out how to master the live scope and, you know, Trying to help people understand, you don't have to have a really heavy action 13 foot rod to live scope. Although, you know, our guys, our pro staff say you do, um, and maybe I'm wrong, but um, you know, I, I think for next year, you know, we, we we've got some things in the works, but mm. yeah, it's to know, be continued. Yeah, to be continued, everybody. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we'll have we'll have new crappie rods. We'll have new um, catfish rods. It'll be. Yeah, actually, we'll, we'll probably have them all done by ICAST in July. So Awesome. That's fun. We well, appreciate both of you guys coming out. Hey, thanks for having us yeah. here. Glad to Joel. be here. Glad to be part of Glad it. Glad to be part of it. Here's uh, a little bit of Joel's information. If you ever want to go to Pickwick, give him a holler. What were you going to say, Jason? Oh, I was just going to say, I, I, yeah, I'm just so glad to be a part of this podcast now. You know, oh, shoot you. Yeah. We're excited. <laughs> excited. So, you know, if, if ever one of my pro staffers turn y'all down for an interview, call me. <laughs> and, uh, or Kent. And, uh, and, and we'll we want sure. Jack. Yeah. We want Jack. Yeah, exactly. Y'all want Jack, I'll, I'll convince him to come on here. Yep, that's good. That'd be awesome. Yep. Well, guys, uh, Joe, you want to add anything else before no, we cut just, loose? No, just glad to be a part of Glad to be a part of all the companies that work with us and thanks for what y'all are doing you yep. know uh, appreciate yep. it. it it's great and thing of the future That's i right. appreciate it well guys i'm justin berry brad chapel here and jason and uh joe we appreciate it guys we'll thank check y'all later thank you holla out of my front big muddy river a place i'll always remember cabin on the lake and a fishing pole river here i'll rest my soul i can feel